Protests are growing in the city this morning after a suspected bomb attack. What have you got? One Michael Mason. Outstanding warrants in four states for fraud. So let's go get him. Discreetly. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to shortlist.com. Hello. In the film, we see you running on rooftops, speeding on cars, uh, you're jumping through windows, you're pretty much doing a lot of action scenes uh, with a very short time. Was it as physically tiring as it looked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. We were training for about six weeks before we even started filming just to kind of get the choreography and get our fitness up to a level so that you can do these chase sequences over and over and over again for three days. You know, you kind of... You know, really physically. I did. I fell asleep in my clothes <laughs> in those days. Yeah, a few times. Uh, it is definitely, um, you know, a challenge. Um, the director wanted to have the actors be in the frame, be in the moment, so he could zoom in, so he could bring the cameras closer, could do angles that showed that it was us. And uh, so that meant that we had to really step up to it. Because I found that could just come out of the cinema. I yeah. mean, for you guys, it must have been... Because uh, you were on... It wasn't just on sets as well. It was on location, running around. It seemed like you had the freedom of the city as well. Mm. What was the most bizarre moment for you filming? One bizarre moment, I think it was just bizarre in Paris and we were on one of these grand boulevards and uh, and it was choreographed, you know, vans going down that street and cars. But we were there and I kind of looked around and we'd shut the whole, st the whole boulevard down. Yeah. It was huge and it was there was no traffic on it apart from our stuff and that felt quite surreal. Like you, actually Bastille? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we actually shut a whole street down to do this massive car chase. Uh, that was wicked because I got to do that in real time. Yeah. So I got all these stunt cars that were just driving out. It's just... <laughs> I loved it. Mm. They didn't the sound, That was really good. He does <laughs> You really should think about anger management. Briar. You're reckless and irresponsible. You can't just run and start fire. So you both play Americans in it. Uh, the pickpocket, say a guy. Um, did you ask the man formerly known as Stringer Bell for any tips, Richard? Not for accent-wise, because... That would be the wrong area. Oh, that's very, it's good that you're so oh, precise yeah, with it, because oh, no, you're yeah, Nevada this, right there. Yeah, oh. it's mid-American. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, but I, th I stayed in accent the whole time, and, and we tried to, we helped each other out a lot as well, if you yeah. could hear someone. I'm being honest, I couldn't tell, the, there was no, you know sometimes you'll be like, oh, slip there, there was, there was none of that. That's kind of you to say that, I mean, it didn't feel, for me, I'm a massive critic, you know, and I'm, I'm known for playing a, bit, a famous American character before people knew I was English. Mm. And so what happens subsequently is people go, oh, now that you're English, I can hear it. <laughs> you know? Was um, it strange for you, because obviously the Y was so big and you spent so much time in Baltimore for it. Was it strange for you kind of going back? I guess it was like revisiting an accent that you had to stay in. Well, yeah, again, like, to Richard's point, it was a different type of accent. My Baltimore accent and this accent, this is a little more of a flat, flat American yeah. um, uh, CIA, CIA guy. But um, uh, it, 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 I, I was this, saying this earlier, Hugh Laurie puts it up the best, you know, for English actors, doing an American accent is like yeah. showing up to a tennis match with a fish. Instead of a racket, <laughs> uh, although you might hit the ball, you, you know you're thinking about yeah. <laughs> different things, um, and it's always a challenge. But mm. accents in general, yeah. whether you're an English person doing a Shakespearean accent, is always a challenge. Idris, in the one thing I was that hugely surprised me, and it was brilliant, a bit of a masterstroke. You and Fabulous Slim teamed up for the credits. So the song for the credits, you sing on... I sing. He sings. Oh, you sing on, of yeah, course. Yeah, singing, speaking. Uh, were you being annoyed, Richard, you didn't get to duet? Because I would have loved it. No, my spinging's not up to <laughs> scratch. <laughs> uh, I've heard you're a decent great, singer. Right? I like to just listen to Edward Spink. Spink. And could we imagine you... Would you like to take this further and maybe do the... Uh, See the intro for Luther. That'd be nice. A theme tune for Luther. I did a, a collection of songs for Luther called "Murder Loves John." For, uh, for a little plug there. And uh, <laughs> we can we can edit that. It's fine. No, it's <laughs> but no, listen. You know, I love making music. Uh, Fat Boy Slim loves film, and it was a it was a lovely combination because he watched the film, enjoyed it. It was like, oh, let's make something for yeah, it. Yeah. We we're really lucky to have him, and he was so, he was really pushing me to do the whole 
singing on that song yeah. thing more than anything. And I was like, why not? It's a lovely uh, track. Will you be bringing us a single? Do you know? There actually is. To- oh. <laughs> Spingle. Spang by Idris. Spangle, yeah. There is, there is talk of it being released as a, as a, as a little bit of a... Spangle. Uh, yeah. A spangle, because it's uh, you know it's got a good vibe to mm. it. People like that song. The fact that you've been in Game of Thrones and you've been in the Marvel Universe brings with it the obsessives. Have either of you had any very strange fan gifts before? And can you re- can you maybe tell us about? That? I mm, no, I get a lot of requests. What's the biggest um, request you get? Does it involve the? Can cards? I hold your soul, sword? Is one of the things <laughs> that comes out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, read the subtext. There's something there. Is it? Well, big okay. helmet, big sword. I don't know what you're well, talking about. <laughs> I didn't know it's anything about the uh, the big sword. Richard, any? Someone once left a box with little miniature versions of me in costume from every job I've done, um, and also it was it was accurate to how fat or thin I was at the time of each job. <laughs> So it's like that one's a bit fatter, and she wrote us, you know, you're sorry because you were a bit fatter then. And, and the what? police have got this in the evidence box, right? This is no, I've got it at home somewhere. I think you can enjoy it, okay? And, and and finally, I've got to finish on um, the big question, and you're probably sick of hearing. Uh, it begins with uh, the initials JB, and I'm wondering whether everyone wants to know the super spine question: Are you going to play Jason Bourne? No. Why not? I, I think everyone thinks you'd make a great amnesiac super spy. Because we're planning Briar versus Bourne. <laughs> Whoa. The sequel. That's you can do the theme tune as well. I love that these questions come out as if as if like no one's asked them and then you're now going to reveal that you're playing Jason Bourne. <laughs> it's happening, it's happening. Damon's got the call, he's fine by Bourne, Briar, in. Briar versus Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Cheers, you. Guys. Guys. What are you doing? Going in alone, no plan, no backup. I'm reckless and irresponsible. 